Hey everyone, welcome to Architecture for Thought. Today we are going to take a look at Adobe's Firefly. They recently released an image, text to image generator, along with a whole suite and package of other tools. So I was granted beta access last night, spent way too many hours uh, working on images. And so I'm here to share with you today uh, what the program is capable of and what I came up with. So let's jump into it. So starting with the website, this is what I first saw when I clicked on the link to uh, gain access to the software. So it looks like everything, at least right now, is on this web page. Uh, they've got the text to image, they've got text effects, and then a bunch of coming soons, which some of them look maybe more useful to some disciplines than other disciplines. Uh, probably way more catered towards graphic designers or um, just anything in the field of kind of visual design. So there's also a great video where they kind of showcase a lot of the uh, different tools and how they can be used. I won't play that, but I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can watch it in case you haven't seen it. And then down below on the page, they have a lot of really interesting tools that it looks like uh, would be more useful to something I'd be looking into using. For instance, uh, they've got the in-painting, which is great, basically substituting any images for architecture. You can place people in your images, change the sky, things like that. Uh, then they've got something called personalized results, which looks really interesting. Uh, I'm wondering if it gives you the ability to train your own model so that you can basically teach the AI how to develop images based on your text prompts. And then a few others that maybe are less um, exciting. The text to vector, extend image, which is basically like Dali's outpainting. 3D to image, which does look interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what the program is going to be like in terms of placing the 3D objects. Um, that could be a big one because if the 3D objects actually have digital mesh geometry associated with them, uh, it could be a really quick way to either import or export 3D models and or just produce really quick renderings based on some simple geometry as they're showing here. Uh, then you got text to pattern, text to brush, sketch to image, text to template. All those things are in exploration, so I can't actually click on them or use them. The only two that are available right now are the text to image and text effects. So let's jump into the text to image. Uh, when you click on that link, it brings you to a page with all these amazing, beautiful images that people are producing very quickly, it appears, some more conceptual than others. And then down at the bottom, they've got an area to plug in the prompt. So I've got a few that I've already prepared. And uh, let's just start with something that is a more practical uh, prompt. So I'm just gonna plug this in and I'll read it as it's generating. It's an HD, 4K, photorealistic, highly detailed perspective rendering of a modern minimalist simple kitchen with natural oak cabinets, open shelving, uh, natural oak beams on the ceiling, white marble countertops. During a sunrise, the kitchen has large windows and a view to the Mediterranean Sea. And this is what it produces right out of the box. Pretty good. Um, it's very reminiscent of stable diffusion in that it takes the prompt fairly literally and the quality of rendering just reminds me a lot of what uh, was produced basically in that pro program and model. So you may have seen, you know, right out of the box, it comes with a square ratio, but the first thing you'll notice off to the right hand side are parameter controls and they've done what I've been expecting everybody to do a little better, which is uh, basically the user friendliness and the user experience. They've gone, you know, full blown Adobe on this and made it as user friendly as possible. So off to the right hand side, you can immediately change the aspect ratio without having to plug in any modifiers like you do on uh, mid journey or some other programs. So I like doing widescreen. Uh, especially for architectural or landscape renderings or images. 
And then they've got different content types that you can apply that are basically filters. So you can see it regenerates the image every time you apply some of these filters to it, which again, look awesome. Uh, the aspect ratio definitely does change the <clears throat> quality of the image, or I guess in terms of the composition or geometry in the image, it tries to fit it best to whatever aspect ratio you're using. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I always like to click on photo just so it's looking as photorealistic as possible for these renderings. And then they've got different styles and effects that you can apply to it. Again, probably better for graphic design or visual design. Um, but there's a whole catalog of different techniques and styles and you can kind of um, be more specific about which ones show. If I click on movement, it'll show, you know, steampunk. Uh, it applies it, it puts it at the bottom of the prompt and then you can regenerate with it and it'll show you what it creates. <clears throat> you can also combine the styles, which is really cool. Excuse me. <coughs> and I've noticed that uh, the style overrides, they, they aren't as effective, I guess, when you start combining like photo with steampunk. So I'm not sure if they have some work to do on that or if I'm just using it improperly, but I'm gonna uncheck that because then I want all my images to turn out to be steampunk right now. Um, I have noticed the color and tone do affect it a little bit. So they've got options for warmer, cooler, vibrant, um, let's just keep it vibrant. The lighting, they also have qualifiers from backlighting, dramatic lighting, golden hour, studio lighting. So we're going to do the golden hour just so it has kind of a more warmth look to it. And then at the very bottom composition, uh, the pull down menu or pull up menu for this, uh, gives the camera effect a different qualifier. So it has blurry background, close up wide angle, narrow depth of field, shot from below, shot from above, macro photography. So all of these are great uh, if you're trying to get hyper specific about what type of image you're producing. If it's you know a close up macro photo of a insect, you can click that and then it pulls from its catalog or library of images of macro photography to give the image that type of quality. So I'm gonna click wide angle since most architectural photography is shot like that and then generate again. So these are very quick, easy qualifiers that you can just click to add and you can see how beautiful these images are coming out. Um, you know, there's still some artifacts, I guess we would call it, uh, that, that aren't 100% pure. You know, the faucet over here looks like it's not really modeled properly or, or imaged properly. Um, but you know, the beams on the ceiling with the way the light is bouncing around it, uh, the quality of light in the space. Um, you know, I think my prompt had marble countertops, but I've got marble floors, which is fine too. Um, but great inspiration images, you know, not necessarily final product ready, but definitely, you know, if you're looking at this probably from the image that you're seeing on the screen, which I know I have reduced, uh, it probably looks really great. But when you zoom in, you can definitely see the shortcomings. So that's one rendering. Uh, we'll take another one just for another example to see how it handles some more conceptual prompts. So I'm plugging in now another prompt. I'm gonna keep all the same modifiers. Um, and let's click go. So this one is an 8K HD, highly detailed, hyper-realistic cinematic photo of a futuristic, curvilinear, minimal interior living space, cathedral, terracotta clay, arches, tall, intricate, ornamental ceilings, uh, white stucco, curved glass, lush prairie glass, uh, artificial lighting, so on, so on. So I'm just going to cut to it. <clears throat> and I'll post all of these... Um, prompts in my descriptions in case you want to use them. So again, uh, it does great with, you know, being more literal with your description. I think the less descriptive you are, it actually asks you to be more descriptive in your prompt. So I can show you what that looks like if I just said, um, curvilinear minimal interior living space. And let's run that through the generator. You also notice that it's running really quickly. Um, 
the, the generations take, you know, all of 10 seconds at most. So this one did run through. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, I got a warning when I just had like one word, I think it was, but yeah, see, so this pops up. It says prompt is too short. For the best result, use a longer prompt and describe it. it cut out there, but describe, you know, basically what you want. So it'll give you a picture of space if that's what you're plugging in. Uh, we'll jump to just a couple more. I'm gonna try and keep this session short and concise. So this one, <clears throat> if we're jumping back to a more realistic use for the program for architects, uh, it definitely has a great catalog of realistic architecture that it's drawing from because it's producing you know, fairly accurate renderings of uh, these kind of architectural prompts that I'm putting in. And this one was of a contemporary, modern, futuristic, orthogonal, grand architectural villa, large glass windows, etc., etc. So something that's interesting is it has, uh, we'll run through some of the details here now, uh, a show similar button at the top left corner of each image. And so that's sort of like Mid, Mid Journey's um, variations button, V1, 2, 3, 4. You just click on that button and it'll rerun the other three images based on the image that you ran the show similar for. Uh, you've also got the option to download your image and when you do that it produces this little prompt box that says prompting transparency in AI. Adobe is committed to promoting transparency around content generated with AI tools like Adobe Firefly. When downloading the content generated with Firefly, basically says you're going to get a stamp on your image. Uh, sort of like what Dali was doing with those what, four or five little colors at the bottom left hand corner of the image. Uh, so I'll say continue and it applies it, basically pulls it, uh, saves it and I'll pull it into my browser so you can see it here. So that's the image, uh, really large already right out of the box. So you don't need to enlarge or upscale or anything like that. Uh, at least right now. And then you can see at the bottom left hand corner, it's got the stamp there of approval. So let's go on one more and I'll show you something else that's really interesting is we've got the option to basically use any of the generated images as a reference image in a new set for a prompt. So this prompt was uh, cinematic photo, modern, minimal, organic, sculptural, fluid, smooth, high-end, expensive, curvilinear, epic, architectural villa, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I think these images are looking great, a little comparable to uh, Mid Journey in some cases. I think Mid Journey still has a great ability to blend images together. So if that's what you're into, that's great. But this is a great competitor. You know, this is the, 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 the top dog <laughs> and they're producing a great user-friendly product here. So uh, some of the other options I didn't finish showing you are you can submit it to the Firefly Gallery, which basically just puts it on that homepage if they approve your image. Um, use this image as a reference image, which I'll show you right now. Copy to clipboard, which I think just basically copies the image in case you want to paste it into Photoshop or report the image. So let's use this as a reference image. And as soon as I click on that, it drops it to the bottom left of your prompt box and it shows a little slider bar to basically indicate how much you want it to reference the reference image or how much you want it to play off of the prompt. So you can continue kind of generating it and sliding it back and forward and playing with it like that basically to uh, create new prompts based on that existing prompt. So if you use that image but you totally wanted to change it up and say, you know, a modern orthogonal architectural villa in Santorini and let's make sure my text is correct and generate that 
it's gonna again take the inspiration image and produce some options for you and then you can kind of continue you know going on and on and on and you can see you know here I have the slider bar fairly you know off towards the right hand side but if I swing it back to the left back towards the reference image it's going to use that geometry the colors um, you know kind of the quality of the image and produce images again for you so if you didn't like it you know too conceptual looking at the beginning you can kind of pull it back with some more um, traditional terms or qualities of the image and basically produce a more custom image to what you're looking for so that's going to be it for now we're going to cut off and um, let me know what you guys think in the comments and would love to hear your thoughts and if anyone else has access would love to see what you guys are creating out there so thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you soon bye